Thank you, and please be seated. That last hymn, the title is We Would Be Building, and we are fortunate this morning to have several people who are building love in our world, and we want to hear from them this morning. Let me invite Paul Penniman to come forward along with Jamal Thomas. Um, Paul is the executive director of RISE. Jamal is uh, a rising senior at Morehouse in Atlanta, and so we are thrilled that they are here with us this morning. Um, We've been fortunate to partner with, with Paul and with several of his students through RISE over the past several years. And so welcome to Westmoreland. Thank you, thank you. And um, first, we need to thank the church because <clears throat> it's not just the money that you send us, but it's the great work that you do. I mean, the, it's mind boggling how many service projects and programs that you're involved with. I think, Tim, if uh, the congregation we're running the Capitol and the White House. Uh, in about 12 months, we'd be all straightened out. But um, uh, 19 years ago, I had a simple idea to bring the best tutors and diagnosticians and SAT prep folks down to inner city schools. And 19 years later, we're still the only nonprofit organization that's embedded in schools that has experienced high quality uh, tutors like that. Um, so we're very proud of what we're doing. We actually have a program that works with high school kids who are reading at the third grade level or lower, and there are plenty of them. And just to think about what the pandemic has done, um, we've, I think we've lost about a thousand kids uh, to this, I mean, they're just off the grid. I mean, if you're reading about uh, certain crimes and activities that kids are doing, they're, they're not accounted for. So we have some issues and we're just, we're just doing our, our small piece. That reading program I mentioned um, eventually uh, spawned two uh, college graduates, uh, which we're very proud of. Now, Jamal is not one of those. He, um, in fact, uh, chose Morehouse on his own. We have a college access program that helps students make decisions and he made a very good decision. I think we've just been helpful once he got there. You know, sometimes you just don't have that support system that we're all familiar with uh, and just to navigate those first couple of years of college and um, he's doing splendidly. I, I just had one question for him and that was what has RISE meant uh, for him. So he's just going to say a few words about that. Uh, thank you all for having me here today. Um, just to answer Paul's question, RISE to me means family. It means hope, it means courage, much of the things that you know, a place like this church represents. Um, since Paul and Ras has came into my life, it has been a constant reminder that there are people out there that are willing to lend you a hand to help you ascend and be greater than what your community and your surroundings suggest. Um, I don't really think I would be where I am today within 365 days of obtaining my bachelor's degree in kinesiology without the help of Paul and his, and his resources. So again, like I said earlier, rise means family, it means love, it means hope, and it means courage. And I just want to thank him and uh, for all of his support and love and just embracing me for over the years. Jamal, thank you for being with us. Uh, please know that as you, as you embark on your final year at Morehouse, you go with our, our prayers and our best wishes for you and uh, gratitude that we can partner with RISE over these years. You need to know that the money you have given to our Social Justice and Action Fund, our Easter collection and Christmas collection, goes to support RISE and other groups like that. So thank you for your generosity. Um, another speaker this morning, Reverend Irene, Irene willis Hassan, is the United Church of Christ Minister for Refugee and Migration Services. You need to know that the money you give to our church also funnels its way to our UCC National Office um, to help support the work that she does. Um, as she comes, let me invite you to join in this unison reading. It's at number 863 in your hymnal. It's also printed in your bulletin. But together, let us read these words about justice. Show me the suffering of the most miserable, so I will know my people's plight. Free me to pray for others, for you are present in every person. Help me to take responsibility for my own life, so that I can be free at last. Grant me courage to serve others, for in service there is true life. 
Give me honesty and patience so that I can work with other workers. Bring forth song and celebration so that the Spirit will be alive among us. Let the Spirit flourish and grow so that we will never tire of the struggle. Let us remember those who have died for justice, for they have given us life. Help us love even those who hate us so that we can change the world. Amen. Good morning. I'm Irene willis Hassan, and I'm the Minister for Refugee and Migration Services with UCC National Ministries, and I want to thank you for inviting me to be here today, and also for the work that you are doing um, alongside the Briggs Center to help welcome uh, our new neighbors with dignity. I wanted to give you a quick overview of what the church, uh, as the United Church of Christ as a whole, is doing um, to welcome our neighbors. We have, as a church, just the UCC, we've resettled over a thousand uh, uh, Afghan um, evacuees over the last year, which is phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal um, how wonderfully this church responded to a crisis. Um, and so that's one thing. And then the other thing is that um, this is a landmark year in uh, forced migration and not a good landmark. The landmark is that for the first time in history, we have over 100 million uh, forcibly displaced people worldwide. And that um, is a real problem. And we're seeing increases all over the place of folks trying to find safety and new life in uh, new host countries. And those host countries are increasingly creating security measures to not allow people in, including our own. We have policies at the southern border in place that uh, automatically reject folks from seeking asylum, which is against some international codes that we agreed to in the United Nations Convention of 1951. So overall, there's a large crisis of forced migration happening in the world, more so than ever before. And more so than ever before, host countries like the United States and other Western world countries are closing their borders in response. Now, as I said previously, the church is doing a wonderful job, just the United Church of Christ is doing a wonderful job of um, doing what we can in our power through God to be able to uh, welcome those that we can. And we can increase doing that um, by continuing to do exactly as you're doing to sponsor refugees um, and know that you're not alone. The reason why I'm visiting you today uh, is because you have created this center uh, in which, um, or at least that you're partnered with this center that will create sustainable ministries to be able to continue doing this, to welcome more, uh, to be able to combat um, the increase of securitization, to be able to say, yes, we can, we can do this, and we can partner together to do this. You're not alone. There's churches all over the country that are doing the same thing, and uh, I can net network you with them to uh, be able to provide resources to lift you up and encourage you as you do this good work. So thank you once again, and uh, I'll be around. Thank you. So as I said at the beginning of our time of worship, this has been a tough week. And in the midst of that tough week, there are some really good people doing some really good work in the world. And so thank you, um, Irene, for the work that you and our other partners are doing in the UCC National Office. Thank you, Paul and Jamal, for your work and your words uh, caring for people here in our city. But I invite you to join me in another unison reading, this one entitled Peace printed in your order of service and also found in the back of the hymnal, let us read these words together. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the rights of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Amen. Let us pray. God of life and love and longing, God of song and celebration and sadness, you are with us. And so we pray. 
We pray with thanksgiving for RISE and for the immigration and refugee work of the UCC. In a world of pain and grief, we give thanks for dedicated, compassionate people like Paul and like Irene, their friends and co-workers. Bless them, O God. May their tribe increase. May their work flourish. And together, through the giving of our time and energy, our prayers, the giving of our dollars, the sharing of our hopes and dreams, may we be people of peace and justice. For our world needs that work. Our world needs love and healing. We pray for the people of Uvalde, Texas, of Buffalo, New York, We remember Newtown and Columbine and the Pulse nightclub and the Virginia Tech campus and on and on and on. The same story of garbage and violence and death and ignorance. And so, O God, we pray with heavy hearts and troubled minds. We pray calling to mind little children and grocery shoppers normal, innocent people going through normal days of normal lives cut all too short. And so we bring before you and before our own numb souls these innocent ones. May light eternal shine upon them. May they live in peace eternal. We pray for the families of those who have been killed. We pray for those who live in grief and pain and turmoil, and we place them into your loving arms and hold them in our broken and humble hearts. For our nation, we pray. On this Memorial Day weekend, we have some sense of who we think we are, some sense of who we might aspire to be, some notion of living our lives for others, but we confess, we have failed. We have failed and fallen prey to violence and the lazy worship of weapons of death. We have chosen power over gentleness and dollars over children's lives. Forgive us, O God. For our elected officials, we pray. For elected officials who have the power to act and who have sinfully failed to do so, we pray. Cut their hearts to the quick and cure their wanton selfish madness that they may know the error of their ways and turn from their wickedness. And may we all, O God, As citizens and fellow humans, as siblings and friends and neighbors, may we be compassionate and courageous in this yet another moment of pain and need. May we keep your ways unswerving, O God, that we might free ourselves from the tyranny of complacency and small imaginations. May we have done with lesser things and rise up to live in larger love. Precious Lord, take our hands. Lead us on and let us stand when we are tired and when we are weak and when we are worn 
through the storms of violence and through the nights of never-ending grief, lead us on to the light of your new ways. A light we see in Jamal and Paul and in Irene. A light we feel in the songs of our hearts. A light that leads us to your promised realm of justice and peace for all your children. These things we pray, O God, in the name of Jesus, who taught his friends and disciples to pray together, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.